Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live on a farm with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, July 6th, 2018. Thank you so much for joining me today. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy this episode. This is a podcast mainly about knitting and now sewing. I am new to sewing and also about hand dyeing yarn. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts. You can find me on Ravelry at Noble Character. And I also have a group for this podcast on Ravelry under Noble Character Crafts Podcast. In that group, you'll be able to find the show notes for this episode as well as previous episodes and many other chatter threads. You can also get in contact with me through my email, which is noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I am currently hosting a knit along, which is the brioche knit along, and that is for any project that you would like to make using any brioche, whether it be one or two color brioche done in flat or in the round, whether there's just a small section of brioche or there's brioche throughout the entire project, any of those are eligible to enter into this knit along and so I would love it if you would like to join this knit along. It is running until the end of this month, July 31st, and you can certainly hop over to the Ravelry group to enter your objects into the finished object thread and there's also a chatter thread so please feel free to join in the conversation there. I would love to have you join. So I will start off with knitting today. I don't have any finished objects in knitting but I will show you my works in progress. So my first work in progress is my contribution to the brioche knit along and it is no longer fitting in my project bag, but the yarn is still in there and it is sitting on top of it. So this is a project bag by Tanny Casey and it has these enamel pins on it from Nice and Knit. They're so cute. Oh there, that's a little better. And I am making the Brioche Ponchology, which is a pattern by Suzanne Summer, also known as Sosu Knits. And it is getting very large. So last time I podcasted, I was right here where this, this bird cage, which was from Amy of Little Taylor Ash, she sent this to me. Um, and this is where I was last time I recorded a podcast last week. And so I've been, I've been working on this pretty monogamously since I last recorded. Um, so I've been able to make quite a few inches. I have another progress keeper on there because that is actually where the written pattern was supposed to stop. But when I, I can't really try it on. I haven't taken it off of my cable needle and it doesn't fit over my shoulders right now on this length of a cable. But when I just held it up to my arms, it was only coming just below my elbow. And I really would like this to go almost to my wrist, if not all the way to my wrist when I wear it, just to be a little bit more cozy. I think that's what I would prefer to have. And so I'm just um, repeating the last section of the pattern and following the you know, the increases that are written in the last, just the very last section of the pattern and just repeating that. So I'm increasing every other knit round. Does that make sense? Yeah, so with brioche, you knit one row and then you purl one row. And um, I am increasing every other knit row. Anyway, and I'm only increasing on the side sections. So anyway, it's going well. I finally gotten to the point where I don't have to look at the pattern anymore, which was huge because the increase row was really stressful at first because I was really having to concentrate on what my stitches were doing. But finally, I was able to be able to read the pattern and figure out where I'm doing the decrease stitches and where I'm doing the increase stitches to keep this chevron pattern that I'm doing right now. So anyway, I'm really happy with that. I have, as you can see, introduced a new color so this is, I'm using all my own hand dyed yarn in two different bases, both of them worsted weight. I'm using both my 
um, Lenora base, which is 100% superwash merino, and my Caring base, which is 100% non-superwash merino. And I'm using up lots and lots of different scraps that I have had from pre previous projects, as well as a, as well as a few full stains. And right now I am using this colorway, which is a one-of-a-kind colorway. I'm really loving how it's knitting up though, so I'm thinking about trying to recreate it. But actually this is one of the very first colorways that I ever dyed over a year ago. So I um, don't know how easily that will be to repeat again, but... I'm loving it anyway. So it's just got lots of different tones of purple and pink as the base. And then it's um, got these orange hues um, painted or not really speckled, but more like just a variegation of orange. And then also has some black speckles in there. The background color that I am using is a mistake from when I was dyeing a batch of my Deep Waters colorway and this turned out too dark. So this is a real deep navy blue but my deep waters colorway is not quite that dark. That looks almost black. Anyway, so I'm really loving how those two colors are knitting up together. I think that's really fun, a really fun combination. I am planning to continue this pattern for at least three or four more inches, I think, before I bind off. So I was gonna try to hold it up here so you can kind of see. Right now it's going to yeah, about right here it looks like. And it may stretch a little bit once, you know, because there is some superwash yarn in here. And it's kind of hard to tell how big it is on these on this cable needle, but hopefully I will make it the right size. <laughs> I showed you last week that I had made a mistake again. <laughs> I have made a few mistakes, but they're not terrible. And anyway, I was kind of able to fix it and then I made another mistake. And they're all, all of my mistakes seem to be in the same section, which is a little weird. Let me find it, oh, here it is. Okay, so it's right, I'm gonna show this to you upside down because it's just easier to hold it. But all of my mistakes are in between the beginning of the round and the first stitch marker. Okay, let's see if I can find it. You see, that's good, I can't find it very well. Okay, so here is where I was last week, and you can kind of see that the pattern is off right here, and then it goes across to right here. That shouldn't be over as far. See how these are lined up, and then there's one that's over. And this is also off. So this row, or couple of rows, or I don't know, it was probably a, one of those increase rows that I got off on the stitch count. So, but you know, like I said, if I can't find it very easily, nobody else is gonna see it. And then I made another mistake here. I forgot to do an increase on one side over here and I did it right on this side, but then when I went through to the increase row on the next round, I tried to do like a double increase and it just isn't lining up quite right. But again, it's not that noticeable. I think as long as I keep this center line pretty straight, it kind of got a little wonky right there. But anyway, that's kind of my goal is to try to keep that straight. But it's not perfect, but you know, I haven't done a ton of brioche. This is only my second brioche project ever. So I'm very, very happy with how it's turning out as a whole. And that is actually gonna be on the back side of where I wear it, those mistakes. And so it's not gonna be a problem. No one is ever going to notice that when I'm wearing it, so I don't mind at all. I think that this pattern is stunning, and I'm so pleased with it. I really am. It's so cool. Yeah, I love it. And I really like the other side, too, but I'll just give you a sneak peek. I love this side, too. I think I might actually wear this side more. I don't know. We'll see when I'm done, but... I really love how that goes from the purple to the indigo to the dark blue and then the even darker blue. So anyway, absolutely loving this project. And I'm, I am wanting to cast on, I mentioned last time, I wanted to cast on a baby cardigan and I haven't started that yet because I really wanna finish this before I start that one. Um, but I do need to get that done before August, that baby cardigan. So I really want to get this done so I can get the baby cardigan done. 
anyway, it's getting a little bit, you know, I'm at the end now where, so I'm like, come on, let's get this over with. <laughs> I love it, but you know how it is when you get to the end of a project that you've been working on for so long, it just gets to the point where you're just ready for it to be finished. So I'm kind of to that point with that project, but again, I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm so, I'm going to be so happy with the finished object, I think. So my next work in progress is in a me made bag. And this I made using the Easy Drawstring Bag Tutorial by Erica Arndt. And in here are my socks. I am making a pair of Rhinebeck Rumi's socks, which is a pattern by Kay Linton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs and the Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. And I am using Pix Felici in the Candy Shop colorway. Last time I recorded a podcast, I was right here where this cute little stitch marker from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights is marking. And so I have finished the ribbing. I did a little over 20 rows. You know, I just stopped when that white stripe stopped. I didn't, I don't remember how many rows it was, but it was like maybe 25 rows or something like that of two by two ribbing. I cast on 64 stitches. I am using US size one, 2.25 millimeter needles. I haven't counted my gauge yet, but they're probably nine stitches to the inch. That's usually what I get on this size needle. Um, and I am loving the texture of this pattern. It is so much fun. I just love texture in socks so much. I really am not, I've come to realize that I am not a vanilla sock knitter. I just don't enjoy making vanilla socks and I don't enjoy the fit of them either. So any kind of an easy texture like this is just perfect for me. It's just a four row repeat and it's super simple to memorize and to read, you know, so I can just kind of see where I was when I left off last. And yeah, so I've been able to, I guess, do a complete stripe repeat. You know, I, I was on this coral color and I'm there again. So I have only worked on these while in our van. So I just keep this project in our van and whenever we're traveling, I work on these. So I guess we've been traveling a little bit this week <laughs> because I've had time to work on these enough to get through a whole stripe sequence. So anyway, I'm absolutely loving these. Such a fun uh, colorway from Felici and such a fun sock pattern as well. I highly recommend it for self-striping socks just to give a little bit of interest, but again, not too complicated to make it, you know, it's still a mindless knit where it's not stressful to work on it while you travel or whatever. So I'm really loving this project and I will continue to work on that as we drive around wherever we're going. <laughs> okay, my last work in progress for knitting is in another Tanny Casey project bag. I love the print on this one. This is a cotton and steel um, fabric. And I have a new cast on in here. I am making the Granny's Geraniums Shawl Pattern by Lily of Nordic Stitches. And this is a new pattern that she recently released and 50% of the proceeds that she gets from the sales are going to be donated to cancer research. So I highly recommend that you go check out this pattern on Ravelry and buy a copy to support that um, cause. It is in honor of her grandmother that these uh, this pattern was designed and I am really loving this project. So this is the project that I really want to work on most of all, but I'm forcing myself, like I mentioned, to work on, you know, to try to finish up my brioche project. <laughs> but this is the one that I'm excited about right now. So I am using up tons of different scraps that I have. Actually, I counted and the yarn that I'm using is from five different projects from before. And I'm just using up all of my lightest colors that I had in my scrap spin. So this, it starts off with this mitered square in the middle here. And I used my sweetness colorway. And that's on my radiant base, which has 30% silk in it, which I love for shawls. So I had never made a mitered square before, but it was nice. I, I'm really excited that I was able to make one in um, made me start dreaming of using that pattern for other projects as well. I really liked it. And now I am working on this 
first lace section. So you just pick up stitches along the edge here and start working the lace pattern. And also Lily has made a video tutorial to accompany this pattern. So that's really helpful as well to go at, to be able to watch that to answer maybe in any of the questions that you might have as you are knitting this project. So again, I highly recommend this pattern. And this is my thought colorway and it's on my Solace base, which is my uh, Merino Nylon Cashmere base. So I absolutely love working with that because it's so cozy. I am going to try to hold up all of the different colors I have chosen, although I actually haven't counted them. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different <laughs> little tiny skeins here. So you can kind of get an idea of all the different colors that are going into it. So just real light colors, pinks and peaches. And yeah, I just love them all together. I'm just really excited to use up all these scraps and the pattern is so much fun. I'm loving it. So oh, I'm using the recommended needle size, which is uh, US size seven, 4.5 millimeter needles. I have not counted my gauge for this because I did not do a gauge swatch and the gauge is counted on stockinette and Oh my goodness, so many interruptions today from kids. <laughs> okay, where was I? I don't remember. I really don't remember where I was. Well, I think I was about done talking about this pattern. Uh, I'm loving it. They are so noisy today. <laughs> okay, anyway, I don't think I have anything else to say about this pattern except that I'm absolutely loving it and I will hopefully get a lot of time to work on this this week because I'm enjoying it so much. All right. Oh, I know what I was saying. I was talking about the gauge and I haven't been able to take, I didn't make a gauge swatch because it's a shawl and if it doesn't turn out, you know, if it turns out too small, I can, the pattern says that you can just add to the bottom of it and if it, I'm not afraid of it turning out too large because I'm not using that much yarn really. So it'll be fine. I, and if I use up all of this yarn that I have, I have another skein, you know, it's all my own hand dyed yarn. So I can just dye up more of one of these colors or a new color that is neutral as well. So I'm not too worried about that. So I don't know what my gauge is, but maybe I'll take it once I get to a section that has some enough stock in it to take a gauge swatch. I don't really even know if there is or not, but anyway, just using the recommended needle size. Okay, so that is all of my knitting for this week, but I do have sewing to share with you again, which I'm so excited about. So I have a finished object that I am wearing. I was able to finish the plaid rockabilly dress, which is a pattern by Gretchen Hirsch, and it is in this book that I checked out from my local library. It's Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. And here is a picture of the pattern in the book. And I will stand up to show you this one a little bit better. So there it is. I am so pleased with it. I just feel like this is my first real sewing project that has, you know, that I can wear. I have made a skirt and I have made a knit, a jersey knit simple dress that I just drafted my own pattern for by tracing one of my own garments, my own dresses. But this, I just feel like it's my first real make because I don't know, it just seems, I'm just so happy with it and it seems more, a little more professional looking than what else, the other things that I have made. So anyway, I'm very pleased with it. I, here, I'll show you the back of it. And I'm so pleased with the fit. I thought that it wasn't going to fit, but it does. So anyway, I'm super happy with it. I'll come back up here to show you the pleats along the waistline. I'm so happy with those. When I did have to redo them though, I had this all sewn together. And then for some reason, there was like this pleat wasn't here. It was just, you know, well, it was just like a big 
gap there where there was no pleat. And it wasn't even centered. It was like a little off centered. So I thought if that gap was right in the center, it would look okay, but it wasn't. So I had to unpick from the center over and refold these pleats to be a little bit more matching with the other pleats. And that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm very pleased with how that turned out in the end. I thought that was gonna be a disaster, but it wasn't. So I made the size 10 and on the size 10, it says that there is a partial pleat somewhere. I didn't quite understand that part, but I think that's why the pleats didn't work out right. And anyway, along the side here, I don't know, maybe this pleat, it didn't, it, it kind of wasn't as even right there on the side maybe, but I didn't think that is, was quite as noticeable as it was in, on the front. So anyway, that was hard because I had to like be bending halfway down to show you that. <laughs> that was tiring. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right. So a few um, modifications that I made. The original pattern calls for there to be rickrack added along this v-neck and along the bottom and I eliminated that. And then I was confused because the pattern calls for you to add um, binding tape or bias tape. Maybe I think that was just along the hem, the bottom hem by the rickrack maybe. I didn't quite understand that, but I had bought a package of seam binding and then I never ended up using it. I thought that it was supposed to be used along the, and maybe it was, I don't know. I'm not really quite sure where that was supposed to be added, but I didn't end up using it anyway. I think maybe it was supposed to be added to the sleeves, but I just liked how these were finished. I really am happy with these puff sleeves. I think they're so cute. You know, they're not overly puffy, but they're just so feminine and cute, I think. I really like how they turned out. So, um, and then the hem, there was a piece, I have just a t-shirt under here because this is too low. <laughs> so anyway, um, there is a binding added to the seam here, or the hem here, which I just really liked how that turned out. I did have to um, lengthen that binding by two inches to fit me better because this was way too tight on my arm when I followed the pattern. So I had made that piece and tried to put it on my arm and it wouldn't go on. So I added two inches and I'm really happy that I did that and it worked out so well. I'm really happy with how that is fitting and it's so much more comfortable. The one thing that I'm not super happy with, but I'm so glad that I used this fabric because it's really not noticeable, I think, is this binding or this neck binding is not, I don't think I did that right exactly. Um, I'm not going to turn around again, but on the back, I think that the back neckline is supposed to be straight very well because it goes up a little bit like a kind of like a V, I guess, a backwards V, upside down V in the back a little bit. And I don't, I think it's maybe supposed to be straight across, but mine doesn't quite do that. Um, and then my other problem is that it doesn't lay perfectly flat. There is a bit of a, you can't really even see it there. You can kind of see it there. There's a bit of a little bump right there that I can't get to lay straight. But like I said, this fabric hides it, I think. So it's not noticeable. It's I'm probably the only one that's ever gonna, you know, notice it. But um, I'm really happy with it. I did, oh, it called for um, a different kind of stitch to add the binding. And it was really confusing. I had to look up a YouTube tutorial because I didn't understand it from the instructions in the book. And now I forget what it's called. Oh, understitch. It called for you to do an understitch when adding this binding to the neckline, which I can't even explain it because I don't really, really even remember what I did. I followed the YouTube tutorial that showed me how to do it. But it was so, I just don't, I didn't like, it made, it, it seemed to me that after I did the understitching, then it was hard to get this neckline to lay flat. And right here on the V, you can kind of see the underside of the fabric is turning over to the right side. I kind of wish that I would have just done a top stitch only, 
um, to add that in. I think it would have laid a little bit nicer, but I'm a new sewist, so who am I to say? But that's just my thoughts, my beginning novice sewing thoughts. I did go back in, which the pattern did not call for, I did go back in and add a top stitch just on up here because I was hoping that that would help this v-neck to lay a little bit flatter and I think it did help a little bit so I'm glad that I went back in and did that I do think that it's laying a little bit better after I have done that top stitching along here so the also the other problem that I had was with the zipper for some reason I had put in half of the zipper and then when I went to go put in the other half of the zipper my uh, waist line hem on the back was not matching up it was like off like by two inches so I really didn't understand that. So I had to rip that half of the zipper out and pin it all down. And I had to like stretch the uh, my left side down to meet the other side. And then it was like, it was just like the fabric wasn't lining up very well for some reason. And it's still not perfect. Again, it's not that noticeable. This print is very forgiving, I think, because it you know, just hides a lot. So that's awesome. <laughs> oh, there are darts in here, which is the first time that I've ever done any darts. There's two darts down here, two darts on the side, and then two darts on the back as well. And that just helps the um, bodice to fit so perfectly. When I was first making the bodice, I tried it on and I had my husband try to just hold it together because of course it didn't have a zipper in it yet. And he was like, I don't think this is gonna fit you. It's, <laughs> it's too tight, I, he thought. And so as I was making it, I was thinking, oh, this is probably not going to fit me, but I'm just going to keep working on it because maybe it'll fit me if I lose a little weight or something. So anyway, and of course, it's a good learning experience, even if it ends up not fitting me, but it fits me perfectly. Oh, and also the zipper was supposed to be installed as a lap zipper so that the zipper was covered up by one flap of fabric, but I decided not to do that as well. I just did, I just installed the zipper um in between the seam I guess I don't really know what that's called exactly <laughs> so I've only been sewing if you're a new viewer I've only been sewing for like two or three weeks so I mean I have a little bit of history with sewing I learned how to sew when I was a little girl but I've never really pursued it very much and I've just started getting into sewing garments so I'm very new at quite a few things so that's why this ultimate dress book by Gertie has been such a huge help because she has so many helpful instructions in it so I already have put this into my Amazon cart <laughs> and I um, will probably purchase this down the road when I, when I, well, at some point probably, because I think it's really gonna be a helpful resource to have on hand. Okay, I have another sewing finished object as well. So I'm, I have made another project bag. Here it is. I am very pleased with this in a lot of respects, but um, it's still um, not quite what I was hoping for. So this is my third project bag that I have made. I, um, like I mentioned, started off, this was my the first one I made. I made another one that I showed last time. And then this is my third one. So with these, I like them, but I was hoping to get them to be a little bit stiffer because when they're opened, I mean, you can fold them down and they will stand up really nicely, but um, the they're only lined with a cotton batting, and so they're just a little bit flimsier and they kind of flop over a little bit. So I was wanting to try an interfacing that was stiffer, and boy, did I find, <laughs> I definitely have a stiffer bag, but it's like really stiff. It's like, it's like a basket or a, it's just very stiff. I don't know, I couldn't figure out what weight it was. It's not clearly marked on the bolt at the fabric store. But it was, it seemed like there was either, you know, really thin interfacing or this. This was the only thicker type of interfacing that I could find. I was at Hobby Lobby. So anyway, I'm happy with it, but it's just really stiff. You can still fold this down, but it, it's just very stiff. <laughs> it's not easy. There. It's just, I mean, it's not going to lose its shape at all. It's very stiff. Okay, anyway, but I'm happy with it. It'll definitely, 
you know, work well for a basket more so than a bag. And here you can kind of see when I do the drawstring, <laughs> it's a little hard and it still just keeps its shape. I don't know. It just has no flexibility hardly at all. Anyway, I love um, the patchwork that I did. Uh, this was the first time that I had done something of my own design, you know, my own measurements for a bag. I still use some of the components from the tutorial that I watched. So the, you know, the basic construction is still the same, but I just use different measurements for my bag. So I used lots of different scraps and pieced them all together. And then I just ran a horizontal quilting line all across, which I love the look of that. And I widened the box bottom from my first two that I made. So I like that a lot better too. And this is a little bit bigger. So this one is wider and maybe shorter or maybe about the same height. A little bit shorter, not much. I did include a pocket again and with a contrasting hot pepper, chili pepper fabric, which I think is so fun. And I um, stitched down uh, a little off center here so you have one smaller pocket and one larger pocket. And I'm really pleased, this took a long time of reworking it, but I was able to get the lining stitched in evenly this time. So I'm a lot happier with that because in these first two bags that I made, I had a hard time getting that lining stitched in there evenly there. So I'm happy that I was able to get that in there a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pleased with the progress that I'm making on these. I, I would really like to be able to sell these, but they are so time consuming. Um, but they're really fun. I just am really enjoying making them, but um, I don't know. My husband is encouraging me to try to sell this one, but I don't really know if it's, I'm just not happy with it. I'm like, I'm not going to sell it if I'm not completely happy with it. But I guess if there is somebody out there that's watching that would really like this bag, even though it's not perfect, you know, it's really stiff and I am a new sewist, so, you know, it's not perfect, but it's cute and it would make a nice project bag. So, I guess if there is anybody watching that would like to have this bag, just send me a message through my, um, well, and on any of those uh, social media contacts that I mentioned at the top, um, you can certainly get in contact with me. All of the links to those are in the description box below. So you can certainly get in contact with me if you would be interested. I'd be glad to sell this because I don't really need another project bag this size anyway. I do need a larger one. As you saw, I don't have enough room for my brioche ponchology in any of my project bags. But anyway, let me know. <laughs> let me, and give me some feedback if you are interested in buying any project bags on, you know, well, I, I maybe need to do some more research to see if I can find a happy medium for the interfacing because this one's flimsy, this one's stiff. Do you like either one of these face, uh, interfacings better than the other or would you like something that's kind of in between the two? Let me know in the comments below if you would, um, I would appreciate that just to let me know what, what type of a project bag you like. I love um, patchwork project bags. I love drawstring project bags. So I'm trying to include all of the things that I really love in a project bag. And I have found that it's a little bit difficult to find a patchwork drawstring project bag out there. So that's why I really wanted to try to make some. So. Anyway, let me know your ideas and your feedback. I would really appreciate that. Okay, um, I don't have any sewing works in progress to show you. I do have plans for um, another dress that I want to make next, and I have the fabric all washed and ready to go. Um, I showed it to you a couple episodes ago, so I'm hoping to work on that next, and hopefully I will have some progress or maybe even a finished object to show you on the next episode. I have another square to show you for the 2018 collaboration Afghan, which is a collaboration that I am organizing with 48 independent yarn dyers. I have asked each of them to knit or crochet a seven inch square in one of their colorways. And then I will be piecing all of the 48 squares together into an Afghan. 
that will then be on display at the Indie Untangled Trunk Show in October, and it will also be given away at that trunk show to any of the attendees, or one of the attendees. So the, this square that I received is from Ashley of the Blackberry Ridge, and I think that she has the cutest business cards ever. <laughs> They're so adorable. That's great. Here is her beautiful square, and she included one of her tags, which is so nice, a wooden tag. Isn't that beautiful? That colorway is stunning. I love it. She sent along this cute little mini. Thank you so much for that, Ashley. And this is on her Here Comes the Sun colorway on her Briar Sock base, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon blend. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much, Ashley. I am so excited that you are a part of this project this year and I am so thankful for this beautiful square. So thank you so much for being a part of this project. Stay tuned, I only have two more squares to receive and then I will start piecing the afghan together. So I'm super excited about that. All right, the last thing I have to share with you is my shawl set for this week. Every time I record a podcast, I try to show a set of three skeins that I think would work well together for a shawl or any project that would maybe use three sets of yarn. Just to give you an idea of the different colorways that I have in my shop. I do not do regular updates for my Etsy shop where I sell my hand dyed yarn. I just have several colorways that I have available on all nine of my bases at all times. So I don't have regular update yarn to share with you as other yarn dyers do. I just have all of my colorways available at all times. So I just try to show three different colorways each time I record a podcast to give you an idea of the colorways in my shop and to give you an idea of what colors work well together. So here is my set for this week. I really love those together. So this first one is my victory colorway and that is on my twinkle toes base which has gold stellina in it. It's just a beautiful indigo semi-solid tonal. This speckled one is called Hidden Treasures. So it has this really cool, um, I think like, I think of an ocean color when I see this as the base. So this really neat, deep teal turquoise color. And then it has speckles of a rusty color, some dark, navy blue and then also these pops of like a ultra violet deep fuchsia colored almost and then this is my deep waters colorway which I mentioned before in my brioche ponchology I was using a um, skein that didn't turn out quite as um, quite right but this one is right so it's just a beautiful deep navy blue and it works so well as a neutral to pair with tons of different colorways. So it just worked well. I really wanted to have these two together and this one just worked really well with the three. So I love those. And again, I would really appreciate anybody checking out my Etsy shop at noblecharactercrafts.etsy.com. I am thrilled with every single sale. It just makes my day when I um, get a sale of yarn. So I would truly appreciate you checking out my Etsy shop if you would like to. So that is all I have for this week. We have been doing so well. We enjoyed the 4th of July. We uh, always go to uh, a nearby town. It's about 20 miles from us that puts off a wonderful um, fireworks display. And we're able to pull up on the side of the road to watch them and they do it in an they sh they set the fireworks off from their small airport that they have in the town and so there's they do it on the runway or just beyond the runway and anyway we're able to park right along that road where the airport is and there's nobody in front of us it's just like you have a front row seat and not only do they put them off up into the sky of course but then they also have them like all the way around like a it's like a panoramic view of fireworks you know at the very end when they all go off it's just overwhelming and oh I just love it so much I love how strong the sound is and how beautiful they are it's just 
one of my favorite things. So anyway, we absolutely love that. It's a little bit too loud for some of our kids. They don't like it, <laughs> the noise, but they enjoy looking at it, but they're just like covering their ears the whole time because it's too loud for them. But anyway, I we really enjoyed that. And like I just mentioned before, it's one of the highlights of our summer for sure. So we really enjoyed that. And other than that, uh, I don't think there's really any other news. So I just thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do feel free to give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you would like to subscribe to this channel, I would appreciate that as well. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.